So in California, there are 27 offshore oil and gas platforms, and all of these platforms have a booming ecosystem that exists below the surface. And it's quite surprising, actually, because I grew up in California. Sitting on my beach chair as a child, I would look out, and you'd see these platforms there. They just look like big iron giants out there, but really, there's a ton of life growing underneath them. They're pretty intimidating, you know, there's, it's covered in like oil and all the people are working on there, the boats are all around there and you just associate it with industry. And so that was always my impression of it. But then when we came to California, we got the opportunity to dive on our first platforms and we rolled over the side and it was night and day. You see thousands and thousands of organisms all up and down the entire structure. I mean, you don't even see an inch of the actual platform. It's more like you're diving on a coral reef that's suspended in the water column. It, the platform quite literally looks like it's breathing. These platforms are made of iron, and over time it oxidizes and does have the potential to corrode. However, they've been studying this issue of corrosion in the Gulf of Mexico, and they found that because all of this invertebrate life completely covers the metal structure below the surface, it actually slows down the corrosion process and it's estimated that they can last between 200 to 300 years without needing maintenance. Initially, the oil companies would save a lot of money in decommissioning these platforms because on average, it's for a shallow platform, it's about $2 million to decommission it. So if they opted for rigs to reefs, they'd save on average about, they would only end up paying about 800000 to decommission the rig, take off the top, plug up the well, and leave the structure in place. So when they do that, the oil company is always responsible for the actual well, but the jacket itself is California's responsibility. So they would need to manage it for upkeep if there's ever a storm that comes through or any sort of damage that would occur on the platform. We've been doing a lot of research into what would happen if the Rigs Reef program wasn't implemented. What would you do with these platforms? Well, you would completely remove them. And looking into that process, you start to realize how, number one, incredibly destructive it would be to the environment and that California doesn't have the infrastructure in place to properly recycle these platforms and so that all that metal is shipped off to the third world country to be dumped over there and it's what what is the carbon footprint on that and is that you know really a is that the best option for us so offshore aquaculture is an interesting question because we are, in this day and age, we need to find new ways to cultivate this incredibly important protein source, right? But offshore oil platforms are difficult just because there's so much movement that happens out there. You're so far offshore that it's diff difficult to control. Most aquaculture farms are more near shore and therefore easier to manage, but it's the thought has been presented. and. Who knows, maybe if, these, if the Riggs Reef program really takes off and California you know, decides that that's what they want to do with it. It could be an interesting investigation.